Well, thank you very much for your attention in advance. My presentation today is about animals as crime victims towards an interest-based account for victimhood. So the crime victim is a status that has been understood generally as the subject who has been offended by a criminal offense. This offended subject, in turn, has been understood as the possessor of the legal good among civil, civil law systems and the, or the interest among common law systems that has been criminally protected by a penal rule of conduct. So at first sight, one could think that this understanding of the victim seems to be open to different kinds of entities, as it could be the case, for instance, of animals. Nonetheless, by the time of seriously determine what kind of entities can positively be considered as crime victims, the, uh, the nature of the concept becomes rather obscure. Actually, according to several rules, ru laws ruling in different legal systems, as well as to an extended amount of literature on the matter, it has been suggested that only legal persons, whether natural or artificial, and collectivities composed as well by natural persons can be considered as crime victims. Accordingly, it has been stated that the offenses contemplated on anti-cruelty laws sanctioning animal abuse and mistreatment are victimless offenses by means of being crimes committed against society as a whole, or that they are rather offenses committed against the owner of the mistreated animal, if, of course, is not the author of the offense at the same time. Being this so, and since animals are not legal persons, what are the odds of including them among the status of victim? This is an especial relevant issue because, the symbol, because besides the symbolism that comes with the labeling of someone as the victim of, uh, of some other state, um, the status of victim comes with a role in criminal law process and with some special legal rights often ascribed to the offended direct victim or when that is not possible to its representatives, the indirect victims. So to resolve this question, I propose to analyze conceptually the status of crime victim to determine ontologically what kind of entities can be considered as such. Through this analytical study, I define particularly what are the necessary and sufficient conditions to be considered a victim to finally show that the necessary and sufficient conditions for that is the capability to possess criminally protectable interest and the capacity to hold the victim's legal rights. To both questions, and by considering animals as effective possessors of interest, I will argue at the end in favor of a consideration uh, of considering animals as possible crime uh, victims on the basis provided by an interest-based understanding of victimhood. Well, so in the following, and departing from a concept of victim constructed from the basis offered by literature and from that we can find in most of legal systems, I will determine which are the necessary and sufficient conditions that a given entity has to meet to be considered a victim. So the general understanding of the concept of victim include natural persons as well as artificial persons. Regarding natural persons, the victim can be considered individually, as it is the case of the paradigmatic victim, like the classic victim of homicide, as well as collectively, or supra-individual victims. And it is possible to identify three sources of the victim conceptualization. First, the doctrinal. <laughs> the doctrinal and second place, uh, the national or internal law concept and the international law concept. So in first place, there is the doctrinal concept of victim, but before that, uh, a little remark. Uh, you can see here the triangle of like the criminal law framework regarding, roughly speaking, the parts that are involved, involved in the outcomes of a commission of a penal offenses. We have the state, which monopolizes the use puniendi, which is roughly speaking, the right to punish through a legal system. 
The perpetrator, meaning the natural or the artificial person who has violated the penal rule of conduct, and the victim, generally described as a natural person or an artificial person. Now coming back to doctrine, the victim has been conceptualized basically as the offended by the criminal offense or, which is kind of the same, the holder of a legal good or an interest which has been protected by a penal rule of conduct. So in national law, I resort to the examples provided by my origins, Spain and Chile. Here is a, it's in Spanish and in English, my own uh, traduction, so sorry if it's not very good. But the Spanish legal system establishes on the victim's statute law from 2015 that the victim is every natural person that has suffered damage or prejudice over its own person or patrimony, especially physical and mental harm, emotional harm, or economical prejudice caused directly by the, by the commission of a criminal offense. In Chile, in turn, the procedural criminal code, criminal law code of 2000, defines the victim as the offended by the criminal offense, like most of doctrine does. Add, but also add that in case that uh, the death of the victim or if she cannot exercise its rights, will be also considered as, oops, as victims, um, the spouse, the legal partner, and the children, the ascendants, the partner, and the siblings, and also the adopter or the adoptant. So as we can see in the Chilean case, even when the definition of victim does not address directly to natural person, it has been sustained that it does refer to natural persons by the time of naming the possible substitutes, because it addresses exclusively human family related relatives as possible representatives of the victim. It's like, it doesn't say like uh, the owner or the master or the human companion or whatever, just humans, humanly regarded. So international legal concepts, in turn, uh, we can find two, two salient uh, definitions. First, the United Nations Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice for Victims and of Crime and Abuse of Power, which states that victims means person, persons who individually or collectively have suffered harm, including physical or mental injury, emotional suffering, economic loss, or substantial impairment of their fundamental rights through, through acts or omissions that are in violation of criminal laws operative within the member states, including those laws ascribe, prescribing animal abuse of power. And the United but, uh, European Union Directive from 2012, uh, which establishes the minimum standards of on the right support and protection of victims of crimes, considers that victim is a natural person, again, who has suffered harm, including physical, mental, or emotional harm, or economic loss, which was directly caused by a criminal offense. The family members, as in the Chilean case, and we can see in the Spanish case as well, and like every, all around the world, family members, members of a person whose death was directly caused by the criminal offense and who have suffered harm as a result of the person's death can be considered a victim if the victim is no longer with us. So, thus, these legal definitions means that the law contemplates exclusively a personhood based understanding of victimhood? My understanding is that no. We cannot say that it's law who states that, but there are just some determined legal prescriptions that focuses on particularly natural persons as victims on what kind and on what kind of rights and protection they should be granted. So to determine if animals can be, despite of all these definitions that I show you, uh, can be placed in the role of the criminal victim as advanced, I propose a new concept of victim based on the necessary and sufficient conditions to be a victim. To that, becomes mandatory to identify which are those conditions. The proposed exercise pursues to identify in particularly, particularly the attributes of the essence of 
um, the category of victim, uh, those that makes the victim be a victim, and we, whose absence will preclude the consideration of someone as such. During the process, I will also I also identify the attributes that will constitutely merely accidental elements, who, which absence will not thwart the consideration of someone as a victim. So, to begin with. I suggest that the victim can be conceptualized as the subject possessor of a legal good protected by a penal rule of conduct who is constituted as such since the moment of, on which the harming of the good has been occurred, namely the offense has been committed. Has been committed. Put differently, a holder of a criminally protected interest who has been harmed by the commission of a typified conduct, meaning an act or an omission sanctioned by a criminal rule of conduct. From the premise constituted by the definition offered, it is possible to distinguish two issues. On the one hand, we have the capacity or potentiality to be a victim given by the possession of a legal good, and on the other, the effective transition to the victim status sadly, given by the harm of the legal good criminally protected. The second of this point, of this question, does not depend, at least not in an analytical, from an analytical perspective, on the victimized subject. <laughs> because it results on the action or omission of another. The first, on the contrary, is entirely connected, ontologically speaking, to the victim status. To these both issues, I add, although it is, not it is not a necessary condition to be a victim, the necessity of the ability to hold legal rights that comes with the status of victim, mainly contemplated in procedural, procedural uh, rules. To illustrate what I just said, it is easy to distinguish here uh, two moments and three issues. The process to become a victim, we can say, moment A, ex ante the violation of the rule of conduct, where it is needed that the subject be able to possess the legal good criminally protected, face of the potential victim, like all of us, sadly, hope not, but all of us are potential victims, we are all in that, in that category, and moment B, exposed the violation of the rule of conduct, uh, meaning that the violation of the rule of conduct and harming of the legal good protected occurs, the face of the affected victim. And in that phase comes the legal rights that becomes the holder, and it is needed to be able to be holder of legal subjective rights. So the, quick, the key question to be answered is therefore, and in first place, what are these necessary and sufficient conditions to be the holder of a legal good protector or at the interest, the criminally protected, reserving for later the question about the possibility of being the holder of subjective rights. So the necessary and sufficient conditions from an understanding of the legal good qua interest, or qua, como, as they say here, but I say qua because I learned it like that in Chile. But first, a disclosure. The legal good protected is not a subjective right, even when it has been understood as such, ev and even when sometimes they can overlap. But it is not always the case. For instance, it overlaps regarding life or property, but not on social peace, public order, public health, or even in crimes against environment. The subjective right is not the same as the interest that is protected by the legal provision penal provision. Indeed, the understanding of the legal good as a subjective right poses serious problems and most of all suffer, suffers from a constituent error. It confuses the system of criminal rules which belongs to public law with, despite French people put them in private law and I still don't understand why, uh, with the legal system, with the legal system of, of well, the confusion of this public relations with the system of legal relations between private parties. As I, I showed before, this triangle includes the state and the relation that comes created after the commission of a crime in criminal grounds is 
between the state and the offender. No, and the victim has really not too much to say. But that is how criminal work law works. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, like veganism, there is victimism, but in, in, a, in a legal sense, um, movements that try to increase the, the rights of the victim and the possibility to participate and uh, restorative justice and everything is super important, but nevertheless, this is the structure of criminal justice in a democratic uh, state, uh, ruling by the rule of law. So, um, but that, that's it. <laughs> Um, so, being this so, the correct way to understand the legal protect protected, as has been largely suggested, as, is as an interest that has been protected by a criminal rule of conduct. Put simple, simply, um, when I go out of my speech, I, I, I lost it, I lose it, but... Um, but simply an interest that has been criminally protected. Accordingly, to state that the victim is the holder of the legal good protected is the same as saying, therefore, that the victim is the one who holds the interest that legitimize the protection of a certain good. This is, of course, related with another criminal law principle, uh, which is like the, the, the limits of the use punendi, punendi of the state, particularly the limit composed by the principle of exclusive protection of legal goods. Because of this understanding, it is possible subsequently to suggest that the necessary and sufficient conditions to be considered a potential victim, as I already advanced in phase A, is that the capacity of a given entity to possess ex ante interest whose protection is criminally reinforced. In a further moment, exposed the entity, there it goes, exposed the entity in question must be in condition, in addition, capable to hold, be capable to hold the subjective rights that will derive from the very quality of victim. In sum, to X be considered a victim, it is necessary that A, X can possess subjective interest, B, those interests are criminally protected, and C, X can hold the rights that comes the, with the victim status. So, what about the entity suspicion? From all the above seen, I can suggest consequently that this species or the type of subjectivity in general terms, subject, subjective entity in general terms, does not correspond to an essential element of the victim status, constituting merely an accidental feature. This being so, and if the above mentioned conditions are met, will not exist strong reasons to prevent that entities different from persons, natural or artificial, can hold the status of victims, as it could be the case of animals. So, almost fine, in the finally, I think. I, I'm, right? Okay. So, animals and interest. Having established that the necessary and sufficient condition for the potential victim is the capacity to possess criminally protected interest, and being the species membership not a necessary condition to it, I focus now on whether animals can be capable of possessing this kind of interest. Already Professor Faber said yes, so I will, be, I will, I will go so a little bit more, more, more fast, but I think that there are two issues to address on this matter. A, the notion of interest in general terms, and B, its possession by animals. So regarding the notion of interest, or regard of, 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 of the interest that can be legally protectable, the emphasis must be placed, as Kramer suggests, on well-being. On the author's own words, to say that someone's interest of X will be advanced through the occurrence of an event of, you can see it by yourself, but the thing is that, uh, uh, I did not put it there, but it will be easier. Uh, Emergence of the state of affairs is to say that X will be benefit in some way or ways from the specified event of state of affairs. That is the event or state of affairs with, will improve X condition or will avert or deteriorate the rain. This expansive conception of what an interest is, as Kramer suggests, he, say, he says that he's, he's an expansive suggestion, uh, uh, 
conception, sorry, shall be narrowed by the differentiating between the existence and the moral significance of the interest. Not every interest matters morally, and similarly, not every interest matters legally. To be significant, an interest must be related to one's well-being. In the same line, Feinberg identifies interest as miscellaneous conceptions composed by those things on which one has a stake, and as Kramer links them to the entity's well-being. Uh, so among these various interests, just some of them deserve legal protection, and between them, just a little few deserves criminal protection. According to Feinberg, for instance, criminal, protect, uh, criminal protection should be reached only to the more, more, more vital welfare interests such as health, freedom, property, uh, uh, like that. So, animals as interest processors. The attribute, in my opinion, that allows and explains the possession of interest, or at least for the purposes of this argument, of the welfare interests that matter criminally, lays in the capacity of sentience. That is, in the capacity to experience pain, experience pain and suffering, as well as pleasure and happiness. As Kurki points out, things matter only to sentient beings. Particularly in law, the capacity of sentience will operate in the following way. If a, if a certain entity possesses the capacity of sentience, then it also enjoys the capacity to possess subject interest, interest that will have to be taken into consideration by society in general and by law in particular. Moreover, this is already the case in various legal systems. For instance, the welfare interests of animals are already protected by animal welfare laws and moreover criminally protected by anti-cruelty laws, all of them focusing on protecting the animal's interest in not experiencing pain and suffering as well as in preserving their physical and psychological, psychological integrity. In conclusion, in this work, I have challenged the assumption that only persons natural or artificial as well as collectivities can also can hold the status of victim in criminal law. To do so, I have offered an understanding of the notion of victim that opens itself to entities different than persons, particularly by determining that the necessary and sufficient condition uh, for this understanding is uh, to be uh, but to, to be a potential victim is the capacity to hold criminally protected interest. By this understanding, I have stated that it is possible to suggest that animals, as interest holders by their capacity of sentience, can positively be considered as victims in criminal grounds. Of course, from an interest theory of rights-based perspective, the construction also works for an ascription of legal subjective rights for the face B or exposed. Thank you. Kitos, gracias.